Hi there, this is David Williams, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use Carnot maps to figure out the logic function for incompletely specified functions. Now, sometimes there are combinations of inputs that can't possibly occur or just can simply be ignored. In other words, you don't care about what the value is for that particular input. And this can be used to your advantage when using K-maps to simplify the logic expression needed for that particular system. So let's start off by looking at a generic example. We have a three input truth table, and let's say the system we're trying to build looks something like this. For 0, 0, 0, the output's a 0. For 0, 0, 1, the output's a 1. For 0, 1, 0 input, the output's a 0. For 0, 1, 1 input, the output's a 1. 1, 0, 0 input, the output's a 0. And then let's say for 1, 0, 1, we don't care what the output is. We don't care if it's a 1 or a 0. So we can call this situation a don't care. And we can represent that don't care, or we can represent that we don't care about what value it is by putting in an x. For 1, 1, 0, let's say the input was a 0. And then for 1, 1, 1, we also don't care what the output is. So again, we can designate it with an x. The next step is to bring in the Carnot map and translate from the truth table into the Carnot map. So here's my Carnot map table, and I'll just take each one of these rows to fill in the appropriate cell in the Carnot map. So we'll have a 0 here, a 1 here, a 1 here, a 0 here, a 0. We can also put, we're going to put the x's in the truth table, or we're going to take the x's from the truth table and put them in the Carnot map. We'll have an x here, an x here, and a 0 here. Now the next step in figuring out the logic expression for the system is to group all the ones in the Carnot map. So I'd have a group of ones right here, a group of two ones. However, since I don't care what value these are, I can treat them as ones. I don't care what value those x's are, so in this particular case, if I treat them as ones, I can make a much larger group of four. So that group of four would exist right there. And with a group of four, this is going to simplify my expression. I will have less terms in my sum, my product expression than I would if I just had a group of two. And in this particular case, what value will that group have? Well, A changes from a zero to a one as I move from, from row to row, so it won't be A. B changes from a 0 to a 1 as I move from this column to this column, so it won't be B. However, C stays the same, and it's equal to 1. So that grouping of 1s is simply equal to C. So in this particular case, out is equal to C. Now what if I also didn't care what value 0, 0, 0 had? So I have the don't care here at 0, 0, 0. That means that over here in the Carnot map, I would also have a don't care. So I'd have an x in the 0, 0, 0 cell. This is not going to change my expression. Since I don't have to group x's, I don't have to include it anywhere. I could, an x can be a 0 or a 1. So in this particular case, for this cell, I would, want the treat that, I would want to treat that x as a 0, so I don't have to group it. So the don't cares or the x's can be a 1 when it helps make a group bigger or it can be a zero if it doesn't need to be included in any group. So this example was kind of generic and didn't really apply to any particular situation. I sort of wanted to show you the mechanics of using don't cares. So let's look at an example that actually has a, a real application. The example I want to look at is a binary coded decimal to seven segment decoder. A binary coded decimal is a system of using binary numbers to encode decimal numbers. And this system looks like this. We have the numbers from 0 to 9. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And we want to encode them using this BCD or binary coded decimal format. I'll use the shorthand here, BCD, binary coded decimal. And a binary coded decimal number is a 4-bit number that corresponds to the number from 0 to 9. And it's simply the, the binary value, but using 4 bits. So for 0, the value would be 0, 0, 0, 0. For 1, it's 0, 0, 0, 1. For 2, it's 0, 0, 1, 0. I've saved you having to watch me write them all out. So these are all the not, all the 10 binary coded decimal numbers corresponding to the, the number that they're supposed to represent. And the difference between binary coded decimal and binary numbers is that with binary coded decimals, we can only represent the numbers from 0 to 9. If you want to have the number, for example, 37, you would have the binary coded decimal number 0011, 
and the binary coded decimal number 0111 to represent the 3 and then the 7 of, the, of 37. Oftentimes, you're going to want to take this binary coded decimal number and display it display it on a 7 segment display, for example. So in order to do that, we need a way of converting the binary coded decimal value into the appropriate signals to turn on the lights of the 7 segment display. And so here is a, a basic outline or basic diagram of a 7 segment display. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 different segments. Each one is going to be lit by usually by an LED. And each one is going to be controlled by a signal, single signal. So for example, the, sig the signal OA goes to this LED, turns the LED on if OA is a 1, or turns the LED off if OA is a 0. It could be the other way around. It could turn on if OA is a 0 and off, and off if OA is a 1. That would be an active low configuration. We're going to look at the active high configuration. For, so each one of these segments will be turned on when its corresponding signal is high. For each one of these signals, there's going to be a logic block inside this BCD to 7 segment decoder that looks something like this. We'll have the, th the four BCD signals, BCD3, BCD2, BCD1, and BCD0. These four signals will be going to some logic box, some box of logic here, to generate each one of the signals. So for example, OA. BCD goes to this black box, BCD2 goes to the black box, BCD1 and BCD0 goes to this black box. The logic inside here is going to set OA high when OA is supposed to be on and set OA low if, if OA is supposed to be off. And there's going to be one of these blocks for each one of the seven segments. So in order to fully figure out the BCD to seven segment decoder, you'll need to have seven different Carnot maps. Each one of those Carnot maps will have the same four inputs but driving one of the seven different outputs to turn the, each one of the segments of the seven segment display on. So now I've gone ahead and made a giant table of all of the possible inputs that I could have for BC 3D or BCD 3, 2, 1, and 0 and then one column for each one of the outputs OA, OB, OC, OD O E O F O G, and I also made a third or a last column, an eighth column for invalid that will be high if the input signal is invalid, in other words, not a BCD value. Because one thing that you probably noticed is that if you have four bits, you can have 16 different numbers that you represent. However, with binary coded decimal, we only use 10 of those from 0 up to 9. The values 1010 up to 1111 are not used in binary coded decimal. So in this case, whenever you have those values from 1010 up to 1111, those are don't cares. In other words, we don't care what value we send to OA, OB, OC, OD, OE, OF, and OG. It can be a 1 or it can be a 0, and in our Carnot map we can use that to our advantage to create a simpler logic expression. So I'm only going to do OA in this exercise. If you wanted to complete the BCD to 7 segment decoder, you can follow my same technique to figure out OB, OC, OD, OE, OF, and OG, as well as the invalid if, if you wanted to. So in the truth table, to figure out whether OA should be on for each one of the numbers, what we need to look at is where OA is, and it's along the top here. And then for each one of the BCD inputs, or the decimal numbers, think about what lights would have to be on in the seven segment display to turn that to to display that particular number so for example for the number 0 we'd have all of the outside segments on to display the number 0 so oa would be on in this case so it'll have a 1 there when we're displaying a 1 it will just be ob and oc on just the ones along the right hand side so oa needs to be off for the number 2 it would be oa ob og oe od so oa has to be on for the number 3, yeah, OA has to be on. For the number 4, well, that'll be here, 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 and here, so OA will be off. For the number 5, yes, it will be on. For the number 6, now there's two ways you could do 6. You could do 6 as, as just these ones right here, or you could include the top bar if you wanted to. And in this case, I think it makes more sense to include the top bar. So OA will be on. 
For the number 7, of course, OA will be on. For the number 8, OA will be on. And for the number 9, OA will be on. The next six values, 1010 or 10, up to 1111 or 15, are not decimal numbers. I mean, they are decimal numbers, but they're not single-digit decimal numbers. So for BCD representation, we're not going to use them. So we don't care whether OA will have a 1 or a 0 going to it. So we can put X's for all six of these rows. The next step is to translate from this truth table to this Carnot map. And you can see in the Carnot map, I've got my variables labeled A, B, C, D. But in my truth table, I've got them labeled B, C, D, 3, 2, 1, and 0. So let's call this column A, this column B, this column C, and this column D. Okay, so A, B, C, D of 0, 0, 0, 0 would get a 1. 0, 0, 0, 1 would have a 0. 0, 0, 1, 1 would have a 1. 0, 0, 1, 0 would have a 1. I'm just looking, when I'm filling in these cells, I'm just taking the value of the cell, and I'm looking over in the truth table, the particular row of the truth table, and, and checking out what its value is. Cell 0, 1, 0, 0 would have the value of 0. Cell 0, 1, 0, 1 has a 1. 0, 1, 1, 1 has a 1. 0, 1, 1, 0 has a 1. All of the 1, 1 rows are X's. Those, these bottom four rows here. So those will all be X's. X, 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 X. 1, 0, 0, 0. This is 8. It'll be a 1. 1, 0, 0, 1 is 9. It will also be a 1. 1, 0, 1, 1. This is also a don't care. This is beyond the range of binary coded decimal. 1, 0, 1, 0. Also beyond the range of binary coded decimal. So it will also have an X. Now I've got my Carnot map built. The next step is to make groups of ones. But I've got these don't cares in my table, so I can use those don't cares to my advantage. If it helps me, I will treat them as ones. If it doesn't help me, I'll treat them as zeros, and I don't have to group them. So I'm trying to make my groups as big as possible. I can see right here I've got a nice big group of eight. So I'm going to draw a box around that big group of eight there. Right here, I can see I've got another nice big group of eight if I'm using, if I can use all of these don't cares. There's another nice big group of eights that, that groups these two ones. I need to group this one somehow. This one and this one, I will actually, I actually need to group both of these ones, but you can see they're not adjacent to each other, so I'm not going to be able to group them together. This one is adjacent to this one. It's also adjacent to this X and this X, so I can make a little group of four inside here. Finally, I need to group this one. Now you'll notice that I have a one in every corner. Well, I have an X in this corner, but I can treat it as a one. So I can actually make my group the group of all the corners. So that right there, on the outside, on the outside corners, is actually another group. Now I need to determine an expression for each one of the groups. So let's look at the corner one first. So as I move from corner to corner, what stays the same? Well, in, in this row and this row, A changes from a 0 to a 1, but B stays at 0. So we will have a not B. And as I go from this column to this column, C changes from a 0 to a 1, but D stays the same. So I'll have a not D. So not B, not D will be the expression for the outside corner grouping. What about the inside grouping there of these two ones and that X? What stays the same? As I go from this row to this row, B stays the same at 1. So we'll have B. And then as I go from this column to this column, D stays the same at 1. So we'll have B, D. Now let's look at the green grouping. And I'll do it in green. What stays the same in this big grouping of 8 there? Well, let's see. A stays the same going from this row to this row at 1. B changes. And as I move from column to column, C and D are changing. See, on the only thing that stays the same in that particular grouping is A. And it stays at 1. And then in this red grouping here, 
as I move from row to row, A and B are changing, so A and B won't be in the expression. But as I move from this column to this column, C is staying the same, and it's staying at a value of 1. So I'll have or C. Now let's translate back from the A, B, C, D letters to the B, C, D, 3, 2, and 1. So B is B, C, D, 2, so this will be not B, C, D, 2, or with not D, which is B, C, D, 0. Or with BD, which will be BCD2, BCD0. Or with A, which was BCD3. Or with C, which is BCD1. So there's my expression for the signal that's going to OA, which will turn off this seven segment display segment. Now I can I need to repeat that six more times to get the signals going to to the B to G segments, and then another time if I want an invalid signal to indicate that the BCD input is an invalid BCD number. So I hope you learned something in this video, and I'll see you in the next one.